Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I have a live tutorial lesson to share with you. We're going to be working through this book called Color Dynamics with the very first lesson indicated in the book. But first I want to show you the entire setup process that I go through. So I have spent a few minutes collecting all the things that we're going to need for this project. I also have my painting boards. We do have a project on the back side of these painting boards that we haven't completed so I'm just going to flip them over and use this side. So I need to prepare the paper and because these are practice lessons I am using a heavyweight paper but I'm not using a full like a large sheet these are just nine inches by 12 inches and I'm going to show you a little bit more about the whole process in a second but the first thing I want to do is my daughter is here she's eight she's going to be working alongside with me this is the lesson I'm doing with her but I'm going to ask her to go and wet this Thank you, sweetie. Uh, that was our sponge because this is a wet on wet watercoloring technique. I also want to prepare our watercolors. I do have a full tutorial on how I do this, but I'm just going to do a quick one right now for just these two colors. I also want to show you the paint brushes that we're using. I have a variety of paint brushes. This one is from Mercurius and it is made with all natural fibers. And the important thing to know for this age for, for watercoloring is that you use a wide brush and this one is a flat brush. And I have a few of them, but I also have some of these fuller brushes and ones that are a little bit smaller. And I'm not quite sure how small we want to go with today's project, but I have pulled out a variety of these. I do have my water here with small smaller paint brushes in here and we're not going to use those so I'm going to put those aside and then we're going to mix our paints but before we do that let me make some room here because our painting boards are quite large and I also want to show you the book as well okay so our painting boards are from a Waldorf supplier uh called <laughs> Waldorf supplies uh and you uh the information for all of the materials that we have used are on the blog post that accompany this uh, video and you can find that on my website. And I'm wondering if maybe I can fit two sheets and I can onto one painting board. And I think that actually will, will work a little bit better rather than trying to get two painting boards in this space. Uh, that way you can see both my tutorial as well as my daughter's work. Okay, uh, darling, maybe, oh, do you wanna be on the left side? That's fine, you can be on whichever side you feel more comfortable with. The other side? Okay, so my daughter is just choosing a side right now and I will adjust the lighting. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Uh, let me tell you about the watercolor paper that we're using. It's Fabriano 140 pound watercolor paper. This is nine inches by 12 inches and it is cold press. So it means that you're going to have this nice textured finish to your watercolor paper. And I do prefer that over the smooth finish. But I will go ahead and show you. Fabriano also has, they have a ton of watercolor paper. This, I would call this the more affordable line. They do have some that's a bit more pricey. This one is 90 pounds, so it's going to be a lighter weight watercolor paper, and it's also hot pressed. And so you're going to have this nice smooth finish. And also the papers are thinner okay the next thing we're going to do is tape down our paper and you I, I kind of have I've done it both ways to be honest in the past when my children were much younger we didn't tape down the pages or the paper my children were uh it was back when I just had the two <laughs> Now I've got four and they're, they're grown. Uh, many of them are grown. So when they were really young and also for economic reasons, we did things in a much more frugal manner. And also it had to be a lot more simplistic just because with young boys who would, you know, they just want to dive into the project. And, and I did not have help to set these things up the way you might have like in a school. We just kept it really simple and didn't do that. Now that the kids are a bit older, they have more patience and we can go ahead and do do things a little bit differently the reason why i'm taping this down is so that the paper doesn't warp up but honestly it it doesn't matter all that much in my opinion and in my experience it also provides a border my daughter reminded me which which is true when you're working with wet on wet watercolor your paper is going to buckle and warp in places. And if that bothers you a lot, then certainly you can tape it down. But also in addition to that, you can 
uh, prime your paper by wetting it and stretching it, but that's just a lot more effort than I can do. And then the other thing is that when you're using watercolor or when you're doing a wet on wet watercolor technique, you can also make sure that your page is not like so wet or that your paints are not so wet. And that way, when you when you're working with them, they're not going to pool as much. They're still going to pool if when you do it this way. I was trying to be all frugal here. <laughs> there, I made it work. <laughs> all right, let me finish taping this down and then we can move on to mixing our watercolors and I can show you more about the book that we're doing. Now this doesn't complement any particular main lesson block that I'm doing with my daughter. It's just that we do love to include watercoloring and handwork into our lessons as much as possible and I'm just really excited to finally use this book by Angela Lord because it's been in our homeschool library for some time now and we've only used it a few times and so I'm really eager to go through this book as much as we can. Uh, and just experiment with the different watercoloring techniques. I am trying to make sure that my tape is even because once we remove this, you certainly could trim it down, but I do like the idea of having a nice white border around the edges. All right, let us mix the watercolors. For this, I'm also going to take two smaller paint brushes just for mixing purposes. And, and I have some water here. And that spilled and that's actually quite a bit of water I don't want to make too much so I'm just going to divide that so and I do want them to be even and those weren't very clean there's some dust in that so uh, would you mind rinsing these out please because I would rather we didn't have dust oh and this one too and this one too let's go ahead and rinse those out And I will open these up. So we're using our Stockmar watercolor paints. And the first lesson actually just is for yellow. And I do want to mainly just work with one yellow, just not two yellows. And just work with the different variations of shades you can get with one yellow. But yellow is a little bit tricky to work with. And yet it's a it's a great way to start. As the book indicates, it's the closest to white. So it's a, it's a great place to start. Plus it's a primary color. But I do have two yellows, a very true yellow, lemon yellow and golden yellow. And these are by Stockmar and they are concentrated. So you do absolutely need to dilute them. And how much you dilute them depends on what kind of strength of color you want to have. Now, because these are pricey, I used to go about using them very sparingly, but then I didn't always get the shades that I wanted. So you can always add more water to dilute the color. You can always add more paint to increase the intensity. But one thing that you wanna pay attention to is that these will go bad. So you do want to store them in the refrigerator if you're not gonna be using them right away. And at some point they're going to, possibly because of the mold in the water, they're gonna to start to smell. So you do want to be super mindful of that. And also, I also wanna be mindful of not introducing any mold into my paint. So I am gonna dry my paintbrush and maybe that's not even um, enough, but I'm going to take about that much to begin with. Yeah, can you mix it in here, please? And then I'm gonna do the same with the gold and yellow. This is one of my favorite shades. And these paints will last you a really long time. Uh, so, you know, they, they run about $10 a, a bottle, but they will last you a really long time, even when you're doing really large sheets of paper for watercolors. And then the only thing I wanna do, not all of, keep it inside for just a minute, sweetheart, because I wanna actually check these colors. I'm gonna grab a piece of watercolor paper just to see the intensity. Can I use this side of this project? Okay. Oh, that's really, really beautiful and quite strong. That's super, super gorgeous. Okay, and let's try this one. Oh man. <laughs> I spilled right on the edge. Oh, that's really, really, really beautiful too. 
Um, it's very pale. It's it's light, but it's it's good. It's really good. Okay, so we are set to go. Let me show you the book, and then we're going to get started with our lesson. There are many lessons to choose from when you're first starting out. It's not a tutorial book necessarily, but it does give a lot of pointers. And let me show you what we're going to go through. So this is called Color Dynamics, Workbook for Watercolor Painting and Color Theory by Angela Lord. And the beginning of the book goes through the different materials that you might need and the different techniques that are going to be explored in the book. So we're going to, yes, super, super gorgeous. Uh, we're going to be doing our wet on wet. Veil and layer painting is, I think, better suited for maybe grade five, and grade six and maybe even older maybe grade five is a little early so if you are working alongside a child who is less than say 10 or 11 or 12 years old then the wet on wet works well as well as uh, a more drier technique but the veil painting you can just wait on okay so the first lesson goes through yellow you can see that there are several shades of yellow here going from a cooler to a warmer shade and you could experiment with this absolutely but we're actually going to do something that's a little bit more simple so the painting exercises on the following page go through these different steps that you can take or different um different examples so oh you okay uh, yellow can be painted in fluctuating surfaces, filling the whole page with a variety of tones. You can do a graduated color from light to dark. And the one that I actually wanted to work on today was this one, but you don't have to, sweetheart. My daughter indicated that she wanted to do this one instead, which is totally fine. She can do this one, and then I want to show you how you can lift color. And for me, this this looks like a bouquet of flowers, and so this is what I was drawn to. So that's what we're going to work on today. And you can spend several lessons just working with yellow before you start working with other colors. And what's really great about this book and the watercoloring techniques that you can typically find in a Waldorf setting is that the, the way that reverence is given to color is magnificent at the very beginning of the book it says how can you paint with each color so that each color can express its true nature and and how it can be balanced on the page with other colors it's just a really beautiful way to to remember that color has its own presence i also love the way that you can do variegated tones of the same color that that for me is a very pleasing finished project uh, yeah, my daughter and I both really like the blues and the purples together and just being able just to use one color by itself before you even move into combining colors. So you see a lot of lessons with the blues and the purples and then you see a lot of lessons with the reds before you actually, oh, and the greens and the oranges. So you can see now you can see the mixture of colors before you get into color or paintings that deal with multiple colors together. So I, I super excited about this. Uh, so let us begin. Okay. So the first thing, thank you, sweetheart, is we're going to wet our page. And we're just going to use this sponge to do it. It is... Oh, and go ahead. You want to you just make sure that... And it's nice and moist. I'm glad that she didn't wring it out all the way because I didn't soak these papers ahead of time. And the reason why I'm not soaking these ones is because the quality for the Fabriano is a little bit less than the Strathmore watercolor paper that we would typically use for a wet on wet watercoloring technique. And I just want to show you that one here. This one's nice and large. It fills the whole entire painting surface. But this one is a better quality, so you can actually dunk the whole thing in water and it will hold up really well. So when you're working with wet on wet, the thing that you want to be mindful of is that you do want your page wet, but you don't want any pooling water. So when you lift it up, you want to make sure that no water is pooling and you want to have a nice shimmer to it, like a, a reflection of the water. And I noticed some places weren't quite the same. So I'm just going to go over that one more time. And in some climates, it will dry faster than others. So you may need to wet it again. Okay, I'm going to put the paint next to... Actually, I'll put it in the, in the, the front. And I'm going to give you this paintbrush. And here is the water to rinse it out. And if you want... Actually, that's already a little bit... Okay, so I know that you want to do the variegated tones, 
Would you like me to, to work with you on that? And we can work together? Okay, well then I'm just gonna dip my paintbrush into the, the, the watercolor and then I want to remove all the excess. So I'm just going to gently remove the excess. Then when I paint, I'm I'm right-handed. So I'm going to for me it's easy and comfortable to paint from the left to the right in nice even strokes. Okay? We don't want to damage our paintbrush. So going back and forth in a gentle manner is going to be suitable. I've painted with my sons and that's a completely different experience. Sometimes they get really, uh, they, they hold on tightly to the paintbrush and they, they press really strong to the paper and then the metal hits the paper and, and leaves indentations in, in the paper. So we just want to avoid doing that. So we're just going to go over it nice and easy. I'm just gonna move this up just a touch so that we can see the whole thing. Now these are true watercolors and so even though your page may dry, you can always reactivate the paint with some water. So in a sense, the painting is never truly finished. You can always work it. Okay, so I, I see that you've started with your variegated colors, and I am going to, at this point, um, would, what would you like to do? Oh yeah, okay. And I'm just going to wet this paintbrush for a minute. Oops, one second, darling. And I'm going to, oh, well, that one wasn't cleaned well, so, oopsies. Let me just make sure that we get all the paint off of that one. And then I'm going to dry it a little bit. And then I'm going to start to lift the color. You can see that it lifts fairly easily. Do you want to join us? also see that the color starts to pull back in and it takes a few passes really to lift the color up. Do you, do you need the, the towel? Okay, so, well, um, this needs a little time to dry before I can lift more of the color, but I see that there's a lot of pooling here, so what I might have you do is, um, let me take a little bit of this paint off, um, it's pooling around the edges here, and I know that you want more color down here, but you can see that the page is really buckling in those areas, so what I'm going to ask you to do is just to let this dry a little bit so that you can um, add more paint over it. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll leave your paintbrush right here. And that way you can come in and do another layer. And I'll try a little bit more to take some of this paint out, but otherwise 
we will pause and we will try to come back in a little bit when the page has dried just a little bit so that we can lift that color. Okay. Okay, so I've mostly used a dry paintbrush to lift color, but now I want to use a wet paintbrush to lift color and reactivate the paint. Um, can I make flowers like it's like an easy like to like like, like you're with your brush like like, like down down down? So for the flowers with this project, it's lifting color. For the I can't flowers. do the thing where you go down. down. Um, not for not for this one because this is wet on wet. So for this project, in order to make the flowers, we want to lift the color out. Can I get some of that? Yeah, I'll give you this one. And I will, um, excuse me, Ooh, got a stretch, and I've got another one. And these are paper, scissors, stone. This is the same place we got our painting board from. And, okay, so what we're going to do is we're, we just have to lift the color. So use the tip of your brush, and using a little bit of water reactivates your paint. And then we can gently lift the color out. If, you, if you're adding more of that color, just know that it will take a little bit more effort to lift up the color because your color is going to pool around in the center. Hmm? It takes a little bit of work. Go ahead and try it. It takes a little bit of work. It really does. Look how, how much time it took me just to get these ones. Do you want to use this paintbrush instead? No, I don't want to do it. Okay, then go ahead and let's try to take your uh, dry, uh, not a dry, but a clean paintbrush and try to blend those colors together. Oh, wait, we, we, not too much water though. So it, remove the excess water and maybe even with your paper towel, just take out the excess water and then go ahead and try to blend those colors a little bit. Now it's trying to go up. Mm, it maybe just needs a little bit more time to dry a little bit, but you can. But instead of going all the way down, what we want to do is blend these two areas really well. And do you see how some of your orange went up the side? You might want to just blend that in so that when we remove the tape, we don't just have a harsh line of orange there. We want to try to blend it in as best as we can. I'm gonna get some fresh water because I know this one's quite dirty. I'll be right back. Let me just pour that one in here a little bit. That way I'm not reaching over your painting. Remember to remove the excess water into your uh, watering jar or your paint container. Otherwise you'll end up with too much water on your, on your painting. So it's quite a challenge lifting the color, actually. You have to wet it. Ooh, beautiful. It's 
So this spot here was pretty dry, so I'm reactivating the watercolor and just lifting the color up with the second pass. And I lovely. There's a lot of pooling here, so mm -hmm. so what you can do is take this paintbrush. You have to remove the excess water. You need to dry it a little bit on your paint, uh, your, and then you can just absorb some of that extra water or paint. I love the way that when we lift the color, and the water gets out. Wait till it dries. You can add more paint, uh, more paint. And you, when you lift the color like this, you kind of get a halo effect, and around the edges, you have a deeper concentration of the yellow. I really like the way that looks. Thank you, love. My only complaint with these brushes is that because they use a natural fiber, they shed <laughs> a lot. So, just pulling that off. Another step on my paint. Mhm. Mm do you want? Do you want to just clean that up, or you want to leave it there? It looks kind of. It looks kind of like the, I love the way the sun looks like. It looks like it's traveled across the sky from here and it's left a path. And then your, oh, it's okay, I got it. And then your, your mountains are just the softest ever. So pretty. Okay. So. All right, so that concludes our lesson and I have some feelings about the lesson so I thought I'd tell you right now. Uh, my daughter wanted to do the variegated colors which I think turned out beautiful. I love when children watercolor because their things always turn out so much better. They usually don't overwork a page and they are so much more capable at letting the colors do the work. They just don't overwork it and that's one of the principles that I really need to work on for myself using watercolors and especially in the Waldorf technique is not to overwork it like you can put your will <laughs> on the paper but you also have to submit to the will of the paper the paint the water the environment the airflow the buckling of the paper like you have to just let it also do its own thing if you want to see some of our other homeschool lessons and tutorials, you can tap on the screen right now. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more tutorials as well as information on the materials that we use for this lesson. And if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.